we would be honored if you would join us. Do it. Disclaimer. There are several silky varieties, and the breed standard varies depending on where you're from. This is important to note if you plan to show your silkies in the future. The American Poultry Association standard of perfection will have quite some differences to the British Poultry Standard and Australian Poultry Standard. With this in mind, we'll focus on the American standard for this video. I'm not going to discuss silky meat in this video. I remain firm in my opinion that not all chickens should be eaten, even if you can eat them. Silky and simony meat may have mystical properties in rituals and traditional medicine from where they come from originally, but I treat them as pets. And you don't eat your pets. Hello there, troopers. Welcome to another episode of Imperial Simony's Breed and Focus. I don't have any content right now for the simony my farm's foremost breed, but what I do have though are new silky breeders. It's literally content material that's just sitting here looking cute. Better put them to good use before they start mating, right? With that in mind, for today's episode we're going to talk about the silky. History The silky, or Wu Guo Ji, in its supposedly native China, is speculated to already have existed as far back as the Han Dynasty, in 206 BC. On any account, they have already thrived and existed in China before the arrival of a certain Marco Polo in the 13th century. He penned the first written account about silkies, calling them a furry chicken. Silky's most well-documented origin seems to be China, but South and Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia and India were also noted to be possibly countries of origin for the breed. The Silky is a fibromelanistic breed that possesses black skin, bones and meat. Same characteristics shared by the Simony and Kadaknath, both of which originate from Indonesia and India respectively. It is generally agreed upon that the breed first came to the west by the Silk Road or by ship through maritime trade. During the 1800s, they were popularly marketed as freak show creatures, touted as the offspring of a chicken and a rabbit, and promoted as chickens with mammalian fur. Silkies are now considered to be one of the most popular ornamental chicken breeds due to their fluffy appearance and docile nature. Appearance Besides being historically imported to Europe via Silk Road, the silk is also called as such due to its fur-like feathers, appearing and feeling like silk to the touch. This characteristic gives them their trademark soft and fluffy appearance. The reason behind this is because the feathers lack barbicels. Barbicels are microscopic hooks that attach the individual hairs of a feather. Because the feathers grow loosely, the entire chicken looks like it's covered in down and is unable to fly. Silky heads are crested like the Polish chicken breed, and like the latter breed, also commonly have vaulted skulls. A vaulted skull is a skull with an opening at the top, making silkies look like they have an extra bump on the heads. Not all silkies have vaulted skulls, but those that do usually have larger crests. Silkies come in bearded and non-bearded varieties, with bearded varieties also having muff feathers on their cheeks. The comb should be a walnut, or circular in appearance and range from black to dark mulberry. The rear lobes are turquoise blue, while the rest of the skin, including the face and wattles, should be black but the skin does not usually get as black as so many skin. This colour extends to their muscles and bone, while their blood remains the normal red. Their beak is short, broad and blue-grey, and are also known for polydactyly. Silkies have five toes instead of the usual four. The outer toes and the side of the legs are fully feathered, while the leg itself is dark grey. 
The silky comes in seven colours recognised by the American Poultry Association, and the colours are white, black, buff, blue, partridge, self blue or lavender, grey, and splash. Silkies are also known to be ridiculously difficult to gender unless they're already around six months old. Before then, the only way you'll find out for sure is if you're silky crows or not. Before we move on, please make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. Do it! Personality Silkies are known to be one of the most docile and tolerant chicken breeds, content to sit in your lap for cuddles. If you intend to introduce chickens to your children for the first time, silkies are the best breed for this purpose. A lot of fanciers even keep the silkies indoors, either in indoor pens or roam free while wearing diapers. They thrive well even in smaller confined spaces and is the perfect breed to have in your small garden if you want a chicken that doesn't dig up and destroy everything in sight. Their personality tends to attract bullying from more assertive breeds. This becomes troublesome due to the silky's vaulted skull. Since part of the brain is exposed and only covered by skin and feathers, silkies are prone to injury if they get packed on the top of the head. One good pack on the top of the head can kill a silky, or disable them for life. This puts silkies on the very bottom of the pecking order when introduced to a mixed flock. Moreover, bearded silkies will have limited vision due to the large crests and muff impeding their vision, making them an easy target for predation. If you have a negligent neighbour who has dogs who can enter your property, Having a silkies free range would not be a good idea. Silkies are not fast runners and can't fly or jump very well, so it's necessary to provide them with safe housing and proper supervision. Broodiness Chickens used for production have their broodiness selectively bred out of their genetics to maximise egg production, with the leghorn being the best example of this. Silky breeders, on the other hand, made sure to maintain this characteristic, and it has been known for its notoriousness ever since. Given the opportunity, a silky will go broody regardless if the nest is empty or not. They'll sit in an empty nest, a dummy egg, or even a rock, and hatch it. Nothing will hatch, obviously, so you have to break a silky hen if this happens. You can easily do this by isolating a hen from the rest of the flock in a cage or a pen. Silkies are often used as hankybaiters and are excellent mothers to whatever hatches from the eggs they're sitting on, regardless if it's theirs or not. They also tend to be very attentive mothers and care for their children longer than other breeds. If your intention for having chickens is to have fresh eggs every day, then the silky is one of the worst choices for you. Silkies can be categorised as pets, brooders and ornamental chickens, and that's where it ends, unless you're Asian. Silkies can lay up to 150 eggs a year, but it's also entirely dependent on their diet, stress levels and other varying conditions. The laying also gets often interrupted by their constant broodiness, which is something that also needs to be considered when breeding them. Their eggs are white or cream and vary from small to medium in size. In case you haven't done it yet, now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel and make sure to click the notification bell to get updates on our future videos. Do it! living conditions and management. Since silkies can't fly, building a tall enclosure is unnecessary unless predation is taken into consideration. Low fence is more than enough to keep them inside an enclosure. A run that's enclosed or has netting on top should be more than enough to deter flying predators if they are present in your area. 
Silkies prefer snuggling on the ground next to each other than being on a perch, but if you want to add a roost, make sure to install them low and close to the ground so they can hop up to it without any danger of injury. The nest boxes should be made more accessible to them for the very same reason. You can either place the nests on the ground or raising them a bit and providing the birds with a platform that allows them to climb up the nesting boxes. When handling a silky, it's best to set them on the ground carefully instead of letting go of them. Silkies can only do a controlled fall at best, instead of flying down and dropping them can result to a serious injury. Besides making them unable to fly, the feathers are also not waterproof and are highly absorbent, like a sponge. And show your silkies are kept in an area that will always stay dry regardless of the weather. Hypothermia will kill them and getting mud and stains off the feathers is an absolute chore. Towel dry or hair dry silkies if they get wet due to being caught in the rain or after bathing. A healthy dose of sunshine after an adequate amount of towel drying would also be desirable. Make sure they are kept in a place with plenty of cool water and a lot of shade. This breed handles cold weather better than high temperatures. And that's it for the Silky. Like I've mentioned, I didn't go into all the details about the breed since breed standards vary from region to region. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching Breed and Focus. Give yourself to the dark side. It is pointless to resist.